Okay, new Oscar predictions for the month of January. A lot has already happened and a lot is happening. So these predictions will probably out of date like by the time you guys even see this, depending on how fast I edit. But we've had a lot of stuff happen already. We've uh, obviously had the Golden Globe winners announced, Critics' Choice nominations, SAG nominations, and a bunch of other Guild stuff. Within the next coming weeks, so we'll have PGA, DGA, WGA, and BAFTA. And then before you know it, the fucking Oscar nominations are fucking out. Can't believe it. Once again, let me know what your guys' predictions are. I love to always read them and how wrong I am and how right you guys are, or vice versa. Oh, you guys, you know, kind of like listen to the reasoning because, you know, there's there's a lot of thought in here. You know what I'm saying? As always, with all these Oscar predictions and just in general, you know, follow me on Twitter and Letterboxd. That's how you stay up to date with all my thoughts and everything. That's in the description. Anyway, I spent too much time thinking about this. Let's just get started. I need to just put this shit out. Let's start with, obviously, Best Picture. Okay, so I know you guys see the 10 here. And some of it's changed, some of it hasn't. I am going to explain it. Some of them I, I don't really feel like I need to go over that much. In other words, I will. I obviously want to talk about the top three, and then I actually want to talk about 9 and 10 and uh, what's coming. So you can see there's been a switch. The Power of the Dog is at number one after its Golden Globe win for Best Picture Drama over Belfast. And and yet, it's like one of those things where I, I still don't feel that confident. The Power of the Dog is either Nomadland, where it sweeps all these critics' awards, right? And then a lot of people, you know, rightly so, by the way, they think, you know what, for the industry awards, not sure how much they'll go for it. And then it just continues to win anyways, and it goes all the way. That's the No Man Land path. Or it goes the boyhood route, and it wins a bunch of critics awards. It wins some of the first industry awards, and everyone's like, okay, I guess it is just going all the way. And then before you know it, loses SAG, loses PGA, and then it doesn't win the Oscar. That that seems like it's uh, floor and ceiling. Honestly, that's a good floor and ceiling to have. So I even ran a poll on Twitter. I was like, you know, what, like, what do you guys think is actually going to win? Like, best picture, at least for now. And Power of the Dog won that overwhelmingly, so I said, you know what? I do kind of agree, maybe The Power of the Dog is just that movie, and we're all just kind of underestimating, or not all of us, but you know, I was certainly skeptical of The Power of the Dog, it would be one of the lowest rated audience score movies to win Best Picture, so that's always kind of what held me back, I, I do think audience scores kind of matter, a little bit, but that's that. Let's go to Belfast. Belfast has always kind of felt like a false front runner for number one. It felt like it was just there as a placeholder for some movie to take over. And I guess you can say The Power of the Dog has taken over. And yet, I still don't really buy that that much. I, I'll admit, I had Belfast at my number one until like two days ago, maybe. Yeah, it lost the globe. But A, this has a real chance to overperform at the Oscars. Like The Power of the Dog, but regardless, it has a chance to overperform. And the fact that Belfast's main competition in SAG is what? Coda? And King Richard, I mean, you could say the others, but I think Belfast stands a pretty good chance at SAG. And obviously PGA, because that preferential ballot is a motherfucker, man. I, I still think Belfast is very much in the running. And because of that, it's at number two. Number three is West Side Story. Now, I actually had a West Side Story at number two for, for a little bit, even ahead of the, the Power of the Dog. It won Best Picture Comedy and Musical at the Glows, which, to be honest, most people expected as did I. I, I. I'm a little confused on how I really feel about West Side Story in terms of its awards chances. Yeah, Miss SAG Ensemble, I don't really care that much about that, especially with all the screening issues I've been hearing about that. I think that is the reason why. And this is something that I never really thought about. You know, people are wondering, you know, is Belfast going to win PGA? Is Belfast going to win PGA? What's going to get the 10th slot of PGA? All valuable questions. Can West Side Story win PGA? I feel like absolutely it could. West Side Story, like, why can't West Side Story just win PGA and not Belfast? Like, so because of that, and obviously the Globes shit helps, and I think West Side Story is going to get a lot of nominations come Oscar morning. Th those are the top three. In whatever order you want, I think those are the clear top three. And then, you know, you have Dune, which obviously is going to get nominated. That shit feels good. I still have Licorice Pizza there. Controversy aside, I still think it gets in. Don't look up. It, like, it is just not missing. Adam McKay is, like, impenetrable to the reviews. It doesn't matter. Don't look up. It's getting nominated. I actually feel very good about Coda and King Richard now. So those all feel good. And, you know, I'll admit having eight movies that feel kind of good is a little concerning. But that's fine. Nine, I have Tick, Tick, Boom. I'll admit, I am I'm about this close to taking out Tick, Tick, Boom for another movie that you'll see at my number 11. You guys can probably already guess what it is. I am that close. But just <laughs> in January, mid to late January, what it is right now, I still don't feel 
like that confident in the other ones to put it ahead of Tick Tick Boom, even though I'll admit, as I'm thinking about it right now, I kind of want to. Regardless, I'm just gonna keep it in anyways. I'm already talking about it. Fuck it. It might that might change. But I'm just gonna keep Tick Tick Boom in there. I'm just gonna keep it in there. There's 10 slots, that certainly helps. But um, I'll admit, Tick Tick Boom is far from a lock, and I, I might take it out soon. I, I need to see some some more support from it, which frankly I'm not really seeing in the guilds, and we'll see about BAFTA and stuff, but I don't know. That 10th slot, to me, 9 and 10 are open, but you know, a lot of people just say the 10th slot. Being the Ricardos, I have being the Ricardos there, that was my 10th slot, my last Oscar predictions, and it is still my 10th slot now. There's a couple of reasons why. Obviously, Nicole Kidman is fucking surging, and we'll talk about her in a bit. Javier Bardem can very, very likely get a Best Actor nomination. I really think J.K. Simmons is still kind of floating. He's floating. He's floating around. I think being in the Ricardos is that close also to getting a Best Ensemble nomination. I think that is true. All of that is true. This is just one of those cases where I th really think the industry is just embracing this movie more than other people. And I say this is someone who likes being the Ricardos, right? Like, I have a review for it. I certainly liked it. I'll admit, it's kind of lessering in my head the more I think about it. Like, the initial problems I have are kind of getting bigger. But regardless, I do think being in the Ricardos is going to get a Best Picture nomination as of right now, I think. And that'll come in play when we talk about Best Actress as well. I'll kind of elaborate on that more. But for now, this is my top 10. With Tick, Tick, Boom just clinging to... Oh my god, it is so close. I want to take it out like as I'm looking at it, but fuck it. I'm just going to leave it. That's a 10 right now. 9 and 10 are completely wide open to me. Okay, 11 through 20. 11 is House of Gucci. My god, the House of Gucci surge is fucking insane. House of Gucci got three SAG nominations. Lady Gaga, Jared Leto were expected. And then it got Ensemble. Okay, that's just SAG. You can chalk that up to SAG. It got long listed the fuck out of BAFTA. Oh, I forget how many uh, places or categories House of Gucci got in, along with Don't Look Up, which did very well at BAFTAs, but House of Gucci is long listed damn near everywhere. I, I guess this is just one of those movies, you know? Like, again, this is one of those movies. It is, it is peaking at the right time. <laughs> it is peaking at the right time right now. And, by the way, just for people, I didn't hate House of Gucci either. I certainly didn't like it. I certainly didn't hate it. I the literally the title of my review on my channel is House of Gucci's okay. It's a movie, right? I am I'll admit, I'm kind of surprised at how well it's doing. I thought House of Gucci was like probably made do like okay, I guess, but it is it is surging at the right time. And like I said, I am maybe after this video, who knows? I might take out Tick Tick Boom and put in House of Gucci. And my god, will that be fucking insane. Film Twitter will lose their fucking minds. They will lose their minds. I'm not going to lose my mind, but Film Twitter will lose their mind. And wow, this awards race is really shaping up to be interesting to say the least. And to put it nicely, it is shaping up to be interesting. I think House of Gucci stands a damn good shot at getting in for best picture and like i said i can't reiterate this enough i really want to take it out and put it in but i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna do it yet two of the lost daughter um you know olivia coleman is in it so they gotta kind of put it up there i'll admit i am kind of losing faith in the lost daughter not that i ever had it in my 10 but i thought there was a real chance it could sneak in i'm kind of abandoning that ship a little bit drive my car listen i love drive my car you guys know if you saw my top 10 movies of the year I fucking love Drive My Car. It absolutely should be nominated. I have little faith that it'll get Best Picture, let alone anything outside of International Future, maybe. We'll see about that. Macbeth will just forever stay in the top 15. I don't know if I could bump it down any lower or higher. It's just, I. some people are still like, yo, you're sleeping on Macbeth. Bro, I'm going to continue to sleep on Macbeth. I do not believe it is getting Best Picture. I just don't. 15 and 16 are interesting. Uh, they are the quote, bigger blockbusters. You can say Dune and West Side Story, I guess, is a blockbuster, but you know what I mean. In the typical sense of a blockbuster. No Time to Die got long list of the shit out of BAFTA. That's not that surprising. You know, BAFTAs love their bond. And then Spider-Man No Way Home is fucking Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, These really ride on uh, PGA. It really rides on PGA. I'm interested to see how No Time to Die does. 
like with the full BAFTA nomination, Spider-Man was not eligible for it. If if No Time to Die gets in PGA, I will really have to think about it. And uh, I'm not prepared to think about anything. Like if Spider-Man gets PGA, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. I have no clue what I'm going to do. Regardless, 15 and 16, those are the blockbusters. I'll admit 17 through 20, with all due respect, we don't really need to talk about that much. Nightmare Alley, French Dispatch, Passing, and A Hero. I do 20 for Best Picture, so that's what you're going to get. Best Director, Jane Campion at number one. She won the Globe, and I think she could potentially go all the way. I think she'll definitely get Critics' Choice. I'll admit the brand of Tom Hooper deal, the comparison for it is genuinely scaring me because it makes a lot of sense. He's at number two. I still don't I still don't buy it and I don't know. I don't want to make it seem like I'm putting my own feelings into these predictions because you guys know I obviously don't care for Belfast. But like I just really is that is that really what's gonna happen? Campion, Spielberg, Villeneuve, and we're gonna pick Brana. I just can't see that. So but regardless, the Tom Hooper shit scares the fuck out of me, so he's at number two. I have Steven Spielberg and Danny Villeneuve who feel pretty good and I think are very deserving. Five is the interesting slot. I did have Paul Thomas Anderson in my last ones. I have switched it for Hamaguchi for Drive My Car. Um, it, he is long listed at BAFTA for director. So I'm really going to just be looking out for that international feature director at BAFTA. And I have a feeling it's Hamaguchi for Drive My Car. So I'm going to put him in there. Uh, and that's my five. Paul Thomas Anderson, I'm sorry, but you were bumped out um you know maybe maybe next time i don't know you can still get it though you're at number six adam mckay never count out adam mckay maggie gyllenhaal got the globe so i put her there cohen and heater i mean maybe i mean you know we've seen we've seen weirder stuff but the top four oddly feel good in whatever order i think campion is like for sure the number one slot for right now um and I, I guess that's really all I can talk about there. Best Actress. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. What a fucking shakeup. Best Actresses. You look back last month. Who was number one? Kristen Stewart. And who was number five? Nicole Kidman. I think. I don't even really remember. It has completely flipped. Nicole Kidman. Being the Ricardos. Number one. Best Actress. Let me go on the record again, even though I literally have a video about it. I think Nicole Kidman is very fucking good in Being the Ricardos. I, I watched I Love Lucy as a kid. I thought some of the stuff was genuinely impressive. I think she had some Oscar moments. I personally would not vote for her, but I don't think this is as this is like as insane as some people think. I'll fully admit it is shocking for sure because before the Globes and everything like that, I thought Nicole Kidman was maybe going to get a nomination. Like maybe she would be four or five or six, like in that ring. And yet here she is on her way to potentially winning a second Oscar. What can he say? She's playing Lucille Ball. The movie is being liked and high probability that Nicole Kidman being the Ricardos will be, she will be the best actress nominee that her movie is also in best picture. We'll see obviously about House of Gucci, but being the Ricardos that has a great chance of getting best picture Nicole Kidman kind of goes along with the ride. Javier Bardem was nominated at SAG, which is, yes, good for him, but also speaks well to Nicole Kidman's win. Potential win, I guess. So Nicole Kidman at number one. What can you say? Two, I have Jessica Chastain for the eyes of Tammy Faye. Um, I'll admit, two through four, you can just put them in whatever order you want, and I'm just not even going to bat an eye. I'm just going to be like, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Chastain is really riding the overdue narrative, yes. Um, it would be her first Oscar versus, you know, Kidman getting her second. It is the baitiest, most transformative role that is potentially being nominated here. She does her own singing. She cries. You guys know how I feel about it. I think she is absolutely amazing in the eyes of Tammy Faye. But, I mean, she's at number two. I know, I mean, every every one of these people have pros and cons to them. I know Tammy Faye wasn't seen. It was in September. No one's really talking about it. And yet she's showing up anyway. And the makeup category will probably go along with it. That's good enough. Three, Lady Gaga, House of Gucci. Once again, House of Gucci surge, Lady Gaga. She is in. It is insane, her trajectory this award season. It felt like she was on the way out. New York Film Critics Circle gave her a Best Actress win, and then all of a sudden, it's been fucking skyrocketing like the COVID cases, man. God damn it. Lady Gaga, oddly, feels good. Damn near lock. Like, almost. Like, I don't really think anyone here is a real lock, except for maybe, I guess, Kidman. Um, but Lady Gaga... About as close as you can get. She hasn't missed. I have no reason of her slowing down, especially with House of Gucci doing so well. I think she's getting in. 
Olivia Coleman, The Lost Daughter. The Lost Daughter as a whole, as a movie, is kind of the reason why she's a little bit lower. Do I think she's going to miss? No, I don't. She's Olivia Coleman. I've said this before. I'll say it again. She is approaching Meryl Streep status where she just gets nominated and everything. And she's really good in Lost Daughter. And I think she gets in. Oh boy, how far they have fallen. And I don't take pleasure in saying that as someone who loved Kristen Stewart and Spencer. Kristen Stewart is number five. Spencer is not a liked movie. And I think it's time that us cinephile film Twitter people accept that, okay? I can see why people don't like Spencer. I can see why. I'm not going to be one of those people that it like shits on people for not liking Spencer. I'm not going to do that. As someone who really likes Spencer, I can see why people don't like it. And that's hurting the movie. I mean, my God, Spencer is doing worse than Jackie. I mean, Jackie was showing up at least in places where it should have, right? Spencer is like, Spencer has a real shot of getting like one nomination and that's it. Like, if Kristen Stewart gets snubbed for the Oscars, that'll be fucking insane. I don't think that'll happen. I, like, I, I don't think the SAG snub, as big as that is, because when she got snubbed for SAG, like, she's done. For a win, you're done. <laughs> you're done. It has never happened in the history of since SAG. If you are not nominated for Best Actress at SAG, you don't win the Oscar. Maybe, I mean, I guess you could be optimistic and say, there's always a chance for it to break. You know, records will be broken. Absolutely. Don't think it'll be this one. Kristen Stewart is at number five. She is not secure for a nomination, but I think she gets in anyways. I'll leave it at that. Six, Rachel Zegler, West Side Story. There's some stat, and I already forgot off the top of my head, where it's like, if you won, the actress that wins NBR and also a Golden Globe has never missed a nomination. Uh, I don't know. Rachel Zegler with West Side Story. I mean, I feel like most of the hype and the acting you know representative for west side story is obviously going to ariana debose which makes sense rachel zegler just weirdly did some fucking britney spears she like read she like acted it out for like a monologue with what britney spears said to her sister that shit was fucking weird she got some hate on that regardless rachel zegler i've never really bought the whole zegler thing as best actress but i mean the stats i guess are there she that would be a for sure best picture nominee it's not impossible. Seven, Alana Heim, Licorice Pizza. Um, you could say she's slipping because she's not really getting the, you know, recognition for the industry awards. I agree with that. At the same time, this shit kind of happens with Paul Thomas Anderson where I just feel like this is one of those things that could just easily show up like at like nomination morning. Oh, Alana Heim. And it's like, oh, yeah, like for sure. I don't know. That's just a feeling I have. That's just one of those things. Jennifer Hudson, for respect, she got the SAG nom. Um, you know, congratulations. That just kind of feels like a SAG thing to do. I don't think it'll translate over to the Oscars, but uh, congratulations. Penelope Cruz took a big fucking hit, not even being long listed at BAFTA for Best Actress. That is a huge hit. So she is at number nine. And then, uh, you know, Renate Reinsva for the, the worst person in the world. She was long listed at BAFTA. Congrats. Best actor. Will Smith is winning. Um, I have no reason to change that. I have no reason to change that at all. So I'm going to keep it there. I think he's winning. It just feels like his time. Benedict Cumberbatch is at number two still. I feel like he actually stands a good chance at BAFTA. If he actually wins BAFTA, we'll have to fucking see what, what goes on there. Andrew Garfield could absolutely, honestly, he could like win the Oscar, but I don't know. It just... I feel like he's going up against too much, especially if Tick, Tick, Boom underperforms. Regardless, those are the top three in whatever order you want, followed by Denzel Washington. Him getting the SAG nom, to me, kind of cements him as getting nominated for the Oscar. So there you go. It is really that fifth slot that is the most up in the air. You can see I have Peter Dinklage in for Cyrano, which my my like head is telling me that's wrong because Dinklage did not get SAG, which he absolutely should have gotten. MGM, I don't know what the fuck they're doing with their campaign, but Cyrano is now going to open wide late February. Nominations come out early February, so I don't really know exactly what they're doing. Cyrano was one of the first movies to send out screeners for SAG, and he still missed. I will fully admit, the only thing keeping Dinklage in at number five is A, he's long listed at BAFTA, and if he gets BAFTA, then you start to feel pretty good about it. And also, it is that insane stat of a first-time nominee and Best Actor. How far does it go? Fucking like 40 years or something? Every year since, you know, whatever I just said, for 40 years or whatever, there's been a first time nominee. Is that really going to break this year? Very likely. <laughs> I'll fully admit, very likely it breaks this year. I'm just going to, I'm just going to hold on to it just because I, I think Dinklage can get in at BAFTA. I think. I mean, if he's not, then obviously he's out. 
but I'm just going to keep him in for now. Um, you know, I'm rooting for him. As someone who, I didn't even care for Cyrano that much. I thought it was good. I'm still kind of rooting for him. I think that'd be cool. Javier Bardem, nominated at Globe, nominated at SAG. Being a Ricardo's is definitely going to be a more well-liked and more seen movie than Cyrano. I'll admit, he probably should be at number five, at least right now. It doesn't really fucking matter, though. Like, I'll just change it. <laughs> Seven, Leonardo DiCaprio for Don't Look Up. Oddly, still feels like he's kind of in the running. Now, the only big nomination he's gotten is a Golden Globe Best Actor for Musical or Comedy. He didn't get nominated at SAG. He didn't get Critics' Choice. I feel like if he was going to get nominated anywhere, it would be SAG. It would be one of those things where he literally just shows up with only really one major precursor. And yet, still feels very possible. So, you can never count out this shit. Then the rest, with all due respect, really have no chance. Nicholas Cage and Pig, Mahershala Ali and Swan Song and Joaquin Phoenix and Come On, Come On. I mean, Mahershala Ali and Joaquin Phoenix were actually long-listed at BAFTA, so I mean, I guess, but no. Supporting Actress. Not much has changed. Anjanu Ellis was snubbed at SAG, so she does take a hit. She goes down to number five, but honestly, my top five have not changed. And I think the top five will be the SAG, take out Kate Blanchett, sub in Anjanu Ellis. I think that's the Oscar five. Ariana DeVose, I think, will just sweep. She'll sweep everything, and she'll get the Oscar. I think she is the one person most likely to sweep. Kirsten Dunst seems well. I, I had reservations about her, because it just feels like she can weirdly get snubbed, but she got in at SAG, and to me, that was, like, oddly her biggest obstacle. I still would not be insanely shocked if, for some reason, like, any one of these people below Ariana DeVose gets snubbed, but, you know. I'm not going to will that into existence. Katrina Bell for Belfast just feels good. Ruth Nega for Passing. That one, I guess, feels... I mean, it feels good, but... She feels good for a nomination. It's just, you know, it kind of worries me that she would probably be Passing's only nomination, barring an adapted screenplay nom, which we'll see. And Anjan Ellis, I think, is getting in. Rita Moreno for West Side Story, I guess, could kick out someone if that would be one of those random nominations there. I mean, she got in at Critics' Choice. We'll see. And Dowd in Mass. God damn it. And then the rest, I honestly don't really see happening. Jesse Buckley and The Lost Daughter. Eh. K. Blanchett, Nightmare Alley, that felt just like a SAG thing to do. Meryl Streep, Don't Look Up, um, you know, long list at BAFTA. Don't Look Up got a lot of shit at BAFTA. Best Supporting Actor, okay, here we fucking go, guys. Here we fucking go. To me, top four, feel good. Cody Smith McPhee, I do have winning for now. Um, you know, I've always been in my mind that he would not win. I mean, I didn't even think he was going to get nominated for his well. Jesus Christ, how wrong I was. But then once it seemed like he was going to get nominated, I was like, okay, I don't really think he's going to win. And then he won the globe. So for now, I have to eat my shit. That sounds weird. And I, I just have him at number one for now because there's no really good reason for it. I still think Troy Kotzer could win, but I'll have to see if he takes SAG or we'll have to see just what he takes in his package there. Kieran Hines, I know he wasn't nominated at SAG. I still feel like he gets in. I don't think both Belfast boys are done. So I think he gets in. Jared Leto, I've always really felt that he was kind of getting in. SAG just confirms it. And number five. Part of me is maybe hope dicting this, but also... It feels like it could actually happen. Bradley fucking Cooper and Licorice Pizza. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know some people in the comments disagree with me. And I know there's people who agree with me. Bradley Cooper in eight minutes does more than some of these people do in like 50. And he should be nominated. I love it. I love it so much. I'm so happy he got SAG. I think that is a legitimately big boost for him. We'll see though. He is long listed at BAFTA, which is also helps. We'll see. Certainly not a lock. Ben Affleck and the Tender Bar feels like one of those things that peaks early and then falls off. He's not long listed at BAFTA. That could be the start. We'll see. Jamie Dorn in the Belfast falls to number seven. That, in particular, for the SAG snub, kind of hurts him there. J.K. Sims for being the Ricardos. Can't count him out. And Jesse Plemons for the Power of the Dog. If the Power of the Dog just overperforms, I could actually see him coming along with the ride. But personally, I, I don't I don't really see it. And Mike Feist for West Side Story, who like should be nominated, in my opinion. Original screenplay. Belfast, I still have winning. It won the Globe. I think the Licorice Pizza controversy kind of hurts it, and I have Belfast winning. And this is its path to win Best Picture. If it takes SAG and or PGA and then picks up an original screenplay win, at least, I, like, it could just fucking win Best Picture. I would fucking hate it. Don't Look Up is, like, getting nominated. I don't know what to tell you guys. I just I feel like it's just going to get nominated. Being the Ricardos, I also feel like it's going to get nominated, even though Aaron Sorkin kind of has a weird relationship with the Oscars in a weird way, but I think it's going to get in. Five, I have Come On, Come On. Um, Once again, this is just based off the stat of the lone screenplay nominee. Mike Mills has done it before, so that also makes me feel good. Come On, Come On was long listed at BAFTA for a couple awards, but also screenplay, so that makes me feel a little bit better. And I just don't feel like King Richard is a screenplay movie. Like, are we really going to nominate 
King Richard for that. I mean, first of all, I don't, I don't like this category is a fuck, fuck fest. I don't like this category, at least how it's shaping out to be. But in terms of what's likely, I'm gonna have, I'm just gonna predict the the lone screenplay nominee. Uh, I, I guess this is the year that a lot of standing records could be broken. Um, but I'm just gonna do it for now. Mass, I am just what the fuck. What the fuck, dude? What is going on? I fucking hate it here. And, you know, the French Dispatch, I guess. But, and you know, you have the French Dispatch. I mean, what's Anderson could do it? He could be that, like, I don't know, like that screenplay nominee. Not a lone one. But since the French Dispatch could get nominated in some technicals, maybe it gets in there. I don't know, though. Adapted screenplay. So the USC Script Awards actually were just announced. And West Side Story and Coda both missed. Coda was deemed ineligible. West Side Story, it's unclear, but they believe it's eligible. But to be honest, they don't go for musicals that much. I'm not concerned. The Power of the Dog, I think, is just going to take this award. I think it's going to sweep. I still have West Side Story and Coda. The misses do not scare me at all. The Lost Daughter, I don't think, is a lock by any stretch of the imaginations. I think you get weirdly snubbed at the end of the day. But do I feel better about any other movie? Not really. And then I have Dune at number five. Dune is performing surprisingly well at screenplay. I think it is really taking into account the feat of adapting a book like that. I think that's what's taken into account. Drive My Car, I'm so fucking sad. I hope it gets nominated for Adapted Screenplay because it fucking should. I would personally have that winning, but that is just me. Passing, Passing got in at the scripture. Um, you know, Passing and Macbeth did actually. Um, but you know, they don't match the Oscars that crazy. So I think this is one of those times where they go three for five, take out Passing and Macbeth, put in West Side Story and Coda, I think that's your Oscar 5, probably. Hasaguchi's down there. You see it. Hasaguchi's down there. Cinematography. Um, I kind of feel good about this 5. Do I like this 5? I like 4 out of the 5. <laughs> um, I have Dune winning. And I'm not going to complain if Dune wins. I'm not going to complain of West Side Story, Macbeth, Power of the Dog. I'm not going to complain about any of those wins. So I am just going to be a happy camper. Even if Belfast gets in at the expense of Nightmare Alley and French Dispatch would fucking hurt me. I still like this category very much. I think they're all fucking deserving. I do have Dune winning, though. That's that. Nightmare Alley and the French Dispatch at number six and seven. No Time to Die is kind of kind of hanging around there. But I, I think Belfast will get in at the end of the day. Costume design. Fucking Cruella. I'm not changing you, bro. I'm not changing you off number one. I don't care that the movie came out so early. I don't care that no one's really talking about it like that. Cruella, if they fucking see the movie, if they put on a presentation, it will win. It absolutely should win. I don't know what else to say. Dune, West Side Story, Hasaguchi, all getting in. That fifth slot is up in the air. I have Cyrano that, I don't know. I, I just, Cyrano is just worrying me the more I think about it. But Spencer keeps missing some of these nominations and it's fucking weird. So, and if Spencer's on the way down further, I don't know. It worries me. But... I have it there. I guess the French Dispatch is also there. Tammy Faye, Louis Wayne, Last Night in Soho. Um, I Honestly, any one of these could, could get that last slot. But I think the top four are pretty solidified. Best editing. I have Dune winning because I have Dune winning sound. Spoiler alert. I know. West Side Story, I think we'll get in. Belfast, just based off the sheer power of it as a potential Best Picture winner, I think we'll get it. Don't Look Up, I have. I'll admit, that one I don't feel that good about. But King Richard missing BAFTA for editing take that shit out i'm taking that shit out and because of that don't look up kind of benefits from that i have it there and then i have tick tick boom um i don't know i feel like there's like a, a good amount of editing so i think that could help i mean really any one of those these fucking movies can get in like the power of the dog if it's really going to win best picture it kind of needs an editing nomination i guess being the ricardos could get in no time to die i mean or maybe fucking King Richards really does just take it in the end and gets a nomination. But, you know, based off the BAFTA, I'm not going to go for it. Makeup and hair. Gucci, Dune, Tammy Faye. Feel good. Coming to America, I think, will actually get nominated. Some of that shit is crazy. And then that fifth slot is really down to Cruella, The Suicide Squad, and Cyrano to me. I kind of want to move The Suicide Squad into number five. But I'm just going to keep Cruella there for now. I mean, The Suicide Squad wasn't even long-listed at the Oscars for the fucking visual effects, which is absolutely insane. So I'm just going to have Cruella there for now, but the Suicide Squad could absolutely get in, or Cyrano. But top four, I feel pretty good about. Production design, uh, once again, Dune at number one, and West Side Story is like at number two for a lot. But I have it winning. I, I do think it's down with those two. Nightmare Alley, I think this is where it shows up, and it fucking should. Belfast, don't know why it's happening, but it's going to get a production design nomination, I feel like. I know why it's happening, I just don't agree with it. And the French Dispatch, I feel kind of good about that. I think that's a clean five for whatever reason. 
Um, I guess Cyrano or being the Ricardos could get in. And once again, I just don't feel confident in Macbeth. So it's at number eight. Best sound. Dune, West Side Story, Belfast, No Time to Die. Almost like pretty much locks, um, especially the first three. I feel good about No Time to Die now. I just have Tick, Tick, Boom in for now. I'll admit that one is kind of like a placeholder because I don't know if they'll just say, oh, musical, boom, sound. I think The Power of the Dog could put on a pretty good presentation. Spider-Man No Way Home is fucking long listed for sound. Last Night in Soho actually just got a nomination for the Cinema Audio Society. So I'm, I am keeping my eye on Last Night in Soho. Matrix just doesn't feel like it. In Quiet Place Part 2, it just feels like that one is actually suffering from it's the same thing. So that kind of sucks, but whatever. Visual effects. An oddly up in the air category outside of the first two. So Dune, that is a lock. It is winning. Absolute lock. Throw away the key. No time to die. Getting in. And then from there, it, I guess it gets a little bit tricky. Like, the question is, do we have two Marvel movies in there? Are we going to get one? I think we're going to get one. If we do get one, which one is it going to be? Regardless, I do have the Matrix Resurrections there, even though I don't feel that great about it. Uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, like, should get in. Honestly, the visual effects are fucking great. And then five, I have Spider-Man No Way Home, and six, I have Shang-Chi. I think a Marvel movie is getting in. It's just I don't know which one, so I'm just going to put fucking Spider-Man because I got a long list of that sound. I don't know. Maybe it's fresh on the mind. I don't fucking know. Honestly, maybe it is Shang-Chi, but whatever. I am keeping my eye out on Free Guy as well. That is, like, an original, you know, so... I guess it could get in, and it's like, you know, all video gamey, I guess. Ghostbusters, eh. And then Eternals and Black Widows really have no shot. Original score. Dune, I still have winning. It won the globe. I have no reason to change that now. The Power of the Dog at number two. French Dispatch, Displot. I do have Don't Look Up for Nicholas Bratel. Uh, I'm kind of riding off the Don't Look Up. Not Surge, like House of Gucci, but, you know, it's, it's staying afloat. And then I actually have Parallel Mothers. I might flip that for Encanto. I'm not 100% sure yet, especially with how Encanto's going now. And have Spencer at number seven. That one in particular hurts me because I really love that score. No Time to Die being the Ricardo's King Richard. We'll see. I mean, maybe Spencer really will just kind of get it anyways. But man, Spencer is just, it feels like Spencer is just not doing well. So original song. Not going to spend too much time on this. No Time to Die won the globe. Therefore, it goes to number one. And I think it'll stay that way now. Encanto should have submitted. Uh, we don't talk about Bruno along. With those other guitars, but whatever. Down to Joy Belfast. I mean, l listen, I don't even, I really don't remember the song, and the people who have listened to it say it's not even good, but regardless, it seems like it's getting in. And I have Just Look Up from Don't Look Up. I hope that gets in. That song is an absolute banger. Um, but uh, Beyond the Shore from Coda could absolutely get it. So we'll see. Animated. I mean, Encanto's winning. I mean, Encanto's peaking at the right time now that it's on Disney Plus. The fucking songs are everywhere. Encanto has support and song and score. I think it's getting in. And then, you know, Flea, Luca, Mitchells, that feels good. Raya, I still have in because I'm still not sure how Belle and some of the gods are doing. Uh, I'm not sure how many people have really seen it. I guess Belle could take it because it's starting to play a little bit more widely now. So, you know, before nominations come out, maybe that does kind of bump it, but. I'm not going to go against the five, at least for now. Documentary, bro, don't even fucking look at me for documentary. I don't fucking know what's going on with this one. This is the category I'm always the most lost in. The Rescue Flea Summer of Soul, all feel like top three. I still have The Rescue at number one. It just feels like a winner. And because I'm saying that, I guess The Rescue will get snubbed and Summer of Soul will get snubbed. I don't know. In International Future, Drive My Car is still at number one. Honestly, the top five have not changed. Drive My Car, A Hero, Worst Person, Flea, Hand of God. And I do have I'm Your Man from Germany, the movie with Dan Stevens at number six. Compartment number six, I guess, could be looking out for, but the top five feel good for now. The international features usually sometimes is a weird category, so they sometimes do stuff that aren't really expected. Maybe that'll happen, but I'm not going to go against the top for now. And Drive My Car won the globe for it. Kind of to a surprise, in my opinion. And I think it's at number one, and it'll stay that way. Oh, boy. Those are the fucking Oscar predictions for January. Um, my God. We are so close to the Oscar nominations. And um, I kind of can't wait because I'm excited, but also I'm kind of I'm kind of getting over these movies. I'm, I've been feeling like that for a while. I don't feel a ton of passion for a lot of these, even though I like some of these movies. Just one of those things. Once again, let me know what you guys think about it. Honestly, I'm ready to talk about next year's Oscars. <laughs>